What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here, continuing the 31 days of October. So this year, for October, I'm going to try to watch a new horror movie every day, and I'm going to either post a YouTube short on it, or I'm going to do a Rad Movie Review video like this. So you're going to be seeing all kinds of new horror movies that I've never seen before. So the first day, day one, I did Arachnophobia, I did a YouTube short on that, and then today, now we're going to discuss the second film I watched for October 2nd, the second day, so it's going to be Street Trash from 1987. This is an American black comedy horror film that, like I said, came out in 87, and I got some, some serious thoughts about this one. This is one that had a lot of potential, but was kind of wasted, so let's discuss the positives, the negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. Let's do this. Roll it. So Street Trash is a 1987 black comedy horror film that's directed by J. Michael Muro. And this one, the main concept and cru uh, crux of the story is that we have a liquor store owner who ends up finding a suspicious you know, case of little like shots or shooters, like half pints of like Viper this weird alcohol that he finds in his basement and he decides to start selling it for a dollar and all the bums that live in the city decide to start scooping it up they either go buy it or they steal it and what happens to you basically when you chug this stuff or you drink it right away is you just start disintegrating and melting into a thousand beautiful colors so let's get right into the positives of this movie right away and the only I'm telling you right now the only positive I have with this movie is the practical effects. We have practical effects in this movie that are that rival even the likes of John Carpenter's The Thing. Some amazing death scenes and easily, like I said, the best part of the film is all the practical effects because they're really gory, they're gruesome, they're disgusting, and they, they look painful and horrific and stuff, but they're also very colorful and very beautiful to look at. So yeah, this film is really one of those movies that like I would champion as being some of the best practical effects, but that's also kind of what comes into the mixed and negative aspect of this film is that's really all I could champion about this movie is that everything else in this film I pretty much disliked. So let's start off with my biggest negative for me with this film is that we have a mismanagement of tones that is just completely awful. This is a film that, like I said, it's a dark black comedy horror film. And what that means is that it's going to have very tough subject matter that you're not really supposed to laugh at. But this film, like I said, you're, you're supposed to take a step back, look at this film through different eyes and like, you know, laugh at these kind of things. And this film has a lot to say too, especially with times now with being that there's a huge homeless population that, yeah, this film does have stuff to say even now today, but it's one of those films that they mismanage the tone. It's funny to an extent, but then once we hit that 40 minute, 50 minute mark, there's a certain scene that just completely changes this film. And yeah, that's one big major negative for me is like once we hit that moment, I was kind of, it was jarring. It was very jarring because it's like they took a certain scene. I want to say they took a scene like they, from Last House on the Left or The Hills Have Eyes. It's like they plucked a scene out of those movies and inserted it into this movie and like I said, does not fit the film at all. And to add to that, we have a huge unlikable cast, like every, or not cast, but every character, unlikable characters all across the board. Like there's really no one to latch onto into this movie. Like there are positive main, like protagonist character. Our lead bum is a guy who ends up taking a drunk girl from an alleyway back to his place to have some fun with her and then ends up leading her basically to her death because the other bums that live in this junkyard end up, you know, taking her back and doing a little bit of the SA to her and you know, find out that she died. So it's like that it's just a really jarring sequence. And that's the sequence I'm talking about. And to have the fact that our lead protagonist character is responsible for probably the most horrific and saddest death in this film to a character that didn't even deserve it. Yeah, this is a film that's very hard to grab onto. It's a dirty, grungy, you know, New York-y vibe type film. And like I said, just completely, oh, what do I want to say? Like, it's just got that vibe, like almost like a New York Ripper vibe. But New York Ripper is a film that plays with that tone the whole time. It lets you know that it's seedy, dark, deep down New York, you know. Uh, prostitutes are being killed by the serial killer. And there's a detective tracking them down. And it's got a very serious tone. 
This film plays it comical for most of it, and then it switches the script about 50 minutes in. We also have some atrocious acting, basically all across the board. Like, I think the acting in this film is pretty bad, like from our lead actor, even our antagonist, our main antagonist character, who's supposed to be a bum, who's a surviving, like, veteran from Vietnam War, and he has all these Vietnam War flashbacks, and he is kind of the leader of the antagonist, like, evil bums that live in this junkyard, and yeah, it's just, it's a film that, I was basically really upset with too after I finished it because I felt like if they handled this film correctly that this could have been a film that I championed that I would have been like yes I'm all here for it because especially the fact that this film kind of also classifies as a melting movie which I'm famous for loving those kind of movies the blob the stuff society there's some great Brian Usna Larry Cohen films that are just fantastic great practical effects and these really awesome wild concepts for films and this is kind of one of those movies but it's just it's like awful it's the bad version of those kind of films so this is one that yeah I, I struggle with it to being recommending it and I want it to be one of those films I wanted it to be a heavy recommend type film because I support these films a lot but yeah like I said there's not really a lot that I can say about this film that's a positive and we also have a third act that's just kind of like, uh, by the time we got to the third act, I was like, I was already past the point. And I kind of wanted the film to just be done. So I really do try to stay positive on these videos and try to talk, you know, you know, of these films up, <clears throat> bring up films that I want people to enjoy. But, you know, I'm going to be checking out 31 horror films that I've never seen for this October. So there's always going to be the possibility like this one that I come into one that I'm just not feeling and street trash, no pun intended is a piece of trash to me. I just did not enjoy this film. Literally just that one huge positive, which I am a huge champion of practical effects. So that's why this film is going to get somewhat of a score, like above a one out of 10 is because of that aspect, because I really do appreciate and love the fact that they took their time into doing that. So for me, Street Trash in my book is going to get a 3 out of 10. Yes, this is going to be one that I don't really recommend you check out. Like unless you're like said a hardcore horror fan, you love disgusting, gruesome, seedy, grimy type movies, this is going to be right up your alley. Like if you like those kind of movies and that's your jam, like I said, the New York Ripper style films or society and you want to like kind of meld that together, this is going to be the perfect movie for you. But for me, yeah, this is one that just too many, too much bad acting, too much of mismanagement of tones, not really a good score or music or anything like that. So there just wasn't a lot for me to latch onto with this film to, for me to enjoy it. Thanks for sticking around with me all for this rad movie review. And these are just my thoughts, my opinions on Street Trash. If you've seen this film from 1987, please let me know down in the comments section. How do you feel about this film? Is this one that you remember back in the day that like mainly it's just the cover. Like I remember the cover to this film and seeing this film, but it's just one I never clicked play on I never committed to it and finally did now so let me know down in the comments what's your thought of this film and also like the video that greatly helps out subscribe and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post videos because we're going to be continuing these reviews and everything for Halloween for the 31 days counting all the way down it's a very exciting time the spooky season is here pumpkin spice is in the air costumes everywhere decorations are getting put up and the leaves are falling so yes it's that perfect Perfect time of year my favorite time of year but most importantly I want y'all to have a safe and happy day peace out